Hey everyone, uh, I realize it's been quite a long time since I've done a video or a stream or uh, actually much of anything. I've moved into a new place, hence the mess back there, but I do have a studio again uh, and I will soon have time to get back into writing music, doing some streams, some tutorials. I've got Reason 13 coming out soon, uh, so I'm looking forward to doing some videos on that. And I've also been learning Logic Pro as I've gone to Mac, but that's another story. Uh, just while I've got some time and before I get back to work, um, just wanted to share a, a tip on using the Arturia Keystep 37 or any keyboard actually that's kind of similar to this. Um, the reason I got it aside from the fact that it's really dinky but it still has three octaves is that it has some really cool built-in uh, step sequencer functionality. It does chords, scale correction, arpeggiator and so on. But the issue that I was having was that when I was trying to use the transport controls, you can't see them too well, uh, but they were being hijacked by the host. So instead of starting step recording on the keyboard, it was starting recording uh, in my host sequencer, which I didn't want. Uh, thankfully, the fix for that is super easy. Obviously, within your host, you just want to make sure that obviously the uh, control surface is added. There'll be remote maps for uh, this keyboard for every door out there. And also that your um, MIDI clock output is going to the keyboard as well. Uh, and obviously, down in reason here, I've got send clock is enabled. And that's going to keep the arpeggiator and sequencer in time with the host. Um, you then also want to download something called the MIDI Control Center. And down here under Transport Settings, you want to make sure that this is set to off. So by default, it's going to be on MIDI CC, which means that when you use the controls on the keyboard, it's going to stop and start the uh, host sequencer. If you set that to off, it's then going to basically control the keyboard only. So we'll just go in here and clear the sequence, hit record. Now we've got a sequence that plays from the keyboard in time in the host. And then obviously we can go in and we can record that. Uh, you could also um, go in here and just assign uh, one of the four control knobs uh, to the filter. So then we can record that sequence straight from the keyboard, uh, including the filter knob motion as well. So there you go, that's how you set that up. As I say, it kind of stumped me when I first got the keyboard. Uh, I couldn't find anything online specifically relating to how to stop that from happening. So I uh, hope that's useful. Uh, as I say, I do hope to be back with some videos and some streams, writing some music uh, pretty soon. I have a pretty big job on at the moment that's eating up like all of my time. <laughs> uh, but as soon as that's out of the way, uh, I'll hopefully be able to get some kind of schedule going. So as I say, hope this is useful. Small side note, uh, if you do happen to know of a good quality but inexpensive side camera that I can use uh, for the keyboard cam, uh, give me some suggestions in the comments because this one is awful. So yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to get myself back to work, but I will be back with you guys soon. Cheers.